Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you from near the gym again with the Honda dealership behind me. I checked the Honda dealership, by the way, I did a video yesterday, <laughs> two days ago, I can't even remember anymore. I think it was two days ago where I talked about um, uh, what the car questions answered, what Brandon from there discussed about dealerships, specifically Jeep and Ram not being able to sell cars and how they had so many on the lot. So I looked at the lot, you can't really see it from here because this is the repair section, but I looked over there, <laughs> over there, <laughs> where the uh, where the new cars are and there are a ton of Hondas sitting in the parking lot right now. So anyway, you know, again, that's just anecdotal. Um, but I also had a friend of mine tell me on Twitter that, uh, that, that he had found out that there was a parking garage near where he lived where, um, I can't remember what it was, it was Mazda and some other company, maybe Honda again, but anyway, they were putting their cars in the parking garage so that their lots looked more empty so that they could encourage people to purchase cars. Anyway, just interesting stuff. But what I wanted to talk about today was briefly to discuss Megan, the movie. I, I finally saw it. I was on Paramount last night and I don't know, I wasn't quite willing to go to the movies for it, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, so M, it's M3GAN. It's the, it's the AI character who is, you know, it becomes a friend of a little girl who, who lost her parents and she has attachment displacement. And also it's a really interesting movie. I actually, you know, Bloomhouse, I've got to say, has gone from making just the dumbest cheap slasher films to making really interesting and thought-provoking movies. Uh, my wife was watching like a couple of the Scream movies because she wants to go see the new one that just came out and that was dumb slasher movies. But this is like an intelligent movie. So if you haven't seen it, I highly encourage it. But I think a lot of people are conflating chat GPT, GPT-4, GPT-5, whatever the next generation of these things is, they're conflating that with something like Megan, and that's simply not ever going to happen. So, um, to, to I, I, honestly, I think one of the slight problems with that might be OpenAI themselves. And by the way, OpenAI, given the fact that they did a 98-page paper about GPT-4 in which they didn't mention the architecture, the training, or any of the details means that they have gone fully ironic with the name OpenAI. So I think, you know, we need to put OpenAI slash irony or something like that. That needs to constantly be the thing that is is put in, in front of, you know how you do like the HTML tags? It's like, you know, slash irony, slash irony off. So anyway, I, I think that it's, it's become fully ironic that they call themselves OpenAI. And I, I actually do hope that Elon Musk in his infinite amounts of time does put some money behind another venture that does attempt to do AI as more of an open source thing. But anyway, in their publication of this, they, you know, they, they actually have a little tag when you bring up GPT 3.5 legacy, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, you can bring it up as like a little drop down box and it has little, uh, little tags, like, you know, how much it does. And GPT 3.5 is much faster than GPT 4. There's things like that. <clears throat> but the thing that I think may concern people is there's a consciousness uh, tag. And so you can see that the, the consciousness level of 3.5 is like one little bar and the consciousness level of GPT-4 is three. And that may be causing people to think to themselves, you know, gee, that, that means it's conscious. It means it's thinking. It means it could be like Megan. And if you don't know, without too many spoilers, I mean, it is a horror movie, but you know, you've got this robot who becomes attached to this girl and then it becomes very pr protective of this girl and then it kind of goes off the rails. But anyway, what is the difference between GPT-3 and, and, and Dolly and Midjourney and you know any of these generative models versus something like Megan? Why is Megan a fictional tale and why are these not going to become that? I'm not saying that they can't be used for bad purposes at all. Uh, I have said many, many times that essentially GPT-3, whatever you, what all of these things are fancy hammers or fancy paintbrushes, depending on what you want to call them. So they are very, very useful, but only as tools. And again, if you have a hammer, you can use the hammer to build a house or you can use the hammer to kill somebody. So that, but that's up to you. That's the person that is, that is generating the intent behind that. And so here even though these large language models are really convincing that they are generating something very, very cool. And I, I you know, it's, it's mind blowing what they're doing and I'm super impressed by that. So even, all, even though that exists, it exists as a fancy hammer. It is nothing that has its own agency. And so if you watch 
the movie Megan or, you know, a lot of other sort of AI based movies or something. The, the danger part, the thing that, that, that triggers is when the, the character, in this case, the robotic girl becomes, takes on agency. She goes from obeying what people tell her and just doing these things to a kind of a, a switch being flipped where she's suddenly like, oh, I am going to, you know, take on my own intent. I'm going to do things because of X, Y, and Z. And you can sort of see, like, there's a rationale behind it. You know, it's not explained in words, but you can see a rationale of why she begins to do these things. And a lot of it has to do with protecting her charge, you know, the little girl. Uh, it, you know, and at the beginning at least, and then eventually she gets really off the rails. But, but anyway, it's that, it's that spark of agency. It's that thing of, I, as an entity, desire this thing. And still to this point, you know, even though you would consider like a dog or a cat not to be like super conscious, I mean, they do have, I, I, I believe consciousness very much as a sliding scale. That's my own personal belief. But even though they're not like conscious to the level of humans, they have agency. They get hungry. They want things. They want to jump up on the bed. They, they, you know, want you to stop hugging them sometimes, you know, whatever the things are that they want, they, they want things, they desire things and they act to get those things. And that is agency. And that is wholly different than what is going on with these large language models, with generative art models, you name it. Those things do not have agency. If you look at it, and, and in fact, a lot of people I don't think know this, but what happens under the hood before you even, you know, get on, so if, just take chat GPT, it doesn't matter which version of it you're using, but before you even get online, there's a little like sub prompt that comes up that, that OpenAI does. And it's something along the lines of you are a helpful, you know, large language model agent, and you are here to help people. And then I think they also have some, you know, caveats, like don't help them, you know, do bad things like build nuclear weapons or something like that. Right. So if you ask it to do something like that, it will say, sorry, I'm, you know, when it responds, sorry, as a large language model, I am not able to do these things. That's because it's been prompted to do that. There are ways, you know, again, with that Dan jailbreak, which I was actually really surprised to hear actually still works with GPT-4. I thought they would have removed that, but you know, there are jailbreaks where you can cause it to behave as if it's something else besides a helpful large language model. And there are places where this can also break as well. But anyway, these things don't have any prompting on their own. If you just took this large language model and sat it in a room, <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't have physicality at this point, but if you took it and sat it in a room, it would just sit there forever. It would never do anything. It, it, it has no motivation. It doesn't go like, boy, I'm really hungry. I need to you know, get some food. Or I would really like to get some love from the, the humans around around me or any of that kind of stuff. It won't do those things. It's, it has no agency at all. And so it will just sit forever. That is a very, very different thing than even a microbe on the planet, right? A microbe will eventually go like, I need to eat. So I need to find some other microbes to eat or photosynthesize or do things like that. So there's a level of intent and agency in any living organism that's simply missing in these things at this point. And, and I think it's unfortunate that OpenAI has put in that term consciousness in the little hash bars or whatever, the little stats bars, because I think that's going to make people go like, oh my gosh, this thing's conscious. It's, it's a behavioral, you know, it's, it's a behavioral thing which makes it seem more conscious. It's not an actual consciousness. And so again, until the day that you have these large language models that go, you know, like, like uh, Hal in 2001, that go like, I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave. Those are times when it's like, ooh, okay, now it's starting to take on agency and that's when it becomes dangerous. Now, to tie this into cars, since we're sitting here and I'm waiting for full self-driving beta 11 to come to me. And I, as soon as I get it, I will be doing a video about that. In fact, I've got a little in-car, wow, it's really hard to do this backwards. <laughs> I've got an in-car camera there. Anyway, um, but as soon as I get that, I will of course be driving it and, and testing it out myself along with all the other people who have access to it. But the, the, the full self-driving stuff at this point, again, it doesn't have agency, right? I'm sitting in the car right now. The car is doing nothing. The car could sit here and do nothing forever until the battery dies essentially and it won't do anything until I tell it I want to go home and put it in drive so it doesn't have agency it's just a robot that's sitting here now 
when we get to robo taxi land and stuff i mean there's an argument to be made eventually that a, an entity like this there are some levels of consciousness i've got to say where it will be driving and let's say a person cuts it off and it breaks or it does things that are reactive to the environment but again, I categorize that currently in the same line of you take a large language model and you say, you know, please write a bedtime story for my three-year-old or something, right? And you're prompting it, it's reacting to the environment, which is the stuff that you're telling it to do. And then it's propagating that out into the logical steps that could happen. With a car, with full self-driving, you're prompting it. You're saying, I want to drive home right now. And then it's react. And again, you're engaging the drive or the reverse or something like that. But even when you don't have to, you still have to tell it. Like someday when it's a robo-taxi, you still have to say, I want to go to this place. And so at that point, it is still acting on your behalf and reacting to the environment and doing what's around the environment to get to its objective. So something like this, a large language model slash full self-driving slash generative art things, they have objectives, absolutely. Those are create a work of art that's like this, or answer me this question based on this, or drive me to my house or to the store, or whatever that is. So those are objectives that it can do, but it doesn't have agency in that objective, okay? That's the important thing to remember, and that's why, you know, when I watched Megan last night, I really enjoyed the movie, but I was like, this is definitely fictional. This is not something that's going to happen anytime soon. Will we recognize it when it does happen? And I'm, I'm a firm believer that it will happen because I believe that consciousness and agency are emergent properties of complex things. And so eventually these things are going to become complex enough that they will have agency, but I'm also a firm believer that it has to be embodied. So I believe that a car slash the Optimus robot or something along those lines is going to have agency long maybe infinitely. <laughs> it may be that these large language models and generative art models never have agency. They never do anything. But that I think that something that lives in the world will actually have agency. And I actually did a video, if you're interested in watching it, you should definitely check it out. I'll put it at the end of the video and up here. But it's on mortal computing and how that could actually generate conscious agent things. And so again, just to, to put a cap on all of this, there is AGI, which people, artificial general intelligence, I think that people really, really misunderstand that. Artificial general intelligence can come about very, very soon, and you could argue that large language models are a big step in that direction, but they don't have agency. They're very generally intelligent, but they don't have agency. So I would call it artificial intelligent agent or something or AIA or something along those lines to differentiate it. So there's AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. It's super, super smart, but then, you know, it doesn't really have any agency or any desires of its own, but AIA or artificial intelligent agent actually has agency and desires things. And once these things desire things, that's when everything gets interesting. <laughs> that's when there's ethics issues. That's when there's issues of it be perhaps behaving like Megan and deciding to go off the rails and do something that humans wouldn't understand because it has its own desires. So that's the part which we have to become aware of right now. Be be concerned about all the human beings and what we might do with it. Because again, remember, we're talking about a fancy hammer. It's something that can build, it's something that can destroy. And it's how we humans use it currently that really, really matters. In the future, when we get to something that has its own desires and its own motivations, that's when we have to worry about the AI itself. We don't have to worry about that right now. Right now, we have to worry about humans and their desires. So those are my thoughts for the day. Jim thoughts. <laughs> Everybody have a lovely day. I've got a lot of stuff to do. So I'm going to bid you all a fond adieu until the next one. Bye-bye.